I was planning on making a video more or less closer to the end of the month. But I had to make one now. If you guys haven't heard, you're a little out of the loop. Edwin Encarnacion signs a three-year, $60 million contract with the Cleveland Indians. That's right, the team that eliminated us. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of all this. Because you have to take positives out of a negative. Because there always is something. What are the cons? Well, we lost a fan favorite. A great person in the locker room. Obviously, we really never heard him speak. But you could see how happy he was to be here. You see how he loved his teammates and the fans and the city of Toronto. And, and he's gone, you know, and it, it, it does suck. Another thing, um, I don't know if a lot of people realized that uh, after the Jays did offer him that four-year deal and that he rejected it pretty quick because he wanted to test free agency and see what it was like, he asked the Blue Jays for four years at $100 million. Obviously, he didn't get anything close to that by the club. Well, he didn't get that with the Cleveland Indians, but different situation. And I think him asking for four years at 100, Jay's brass kind of said, no, we are not paying a guy who just, for the most part, just hits a hundred plus million dollars. We're not. I mean, you know, a great example would be Chris Davis, and I understand he plays first base a lot, most of the time. But he got, what, 150 mil? Some crazy, ridiculous number. And the Jays were not willing to go over that money. And they didn't. The Cleveland Indians, in my eyes, are the clear favorites to win the World Series, other than the Cubbies again. just gets under my skin really so that's some of the cons more or less you got that and you know what we've got to look from at it from a standpoint of yes we lost a fan favorite we lost like emotionally we're hurt however if you're thinking from a baseball standpoint and as statistics and money and dollars and all that kind of stuff Kendrys Morales as much as the name probably isn't there as big as Edwin is, the numbers are very similar. You know, Morales, I think, had 33 home runs last year or something like that. Now he's coming to Toronto, a much better friendly hitter's ballpark than uh, than than in Kansas City. You know, he had almost 100 RBIs this year. I mean, he's a great player. I mean, Kendrick Morales is a fantastic player. He's going to be what Edwin was and was going to be if he stayed. And then you have Steve Pierce, a guy who can play first and a guy who can play outfield, has a little bit of pop. He can hit for a decent average. And I mean, you paid for both of those guys less than what you would have paid for Edwin and what Cleveland even paid for Edwin. So from a baseball standpoint, and like I said, a dollar standpoint, it's not such a big thing. But losing a guy like Edwin Encarnacion always hurts your team, no matter who you sign, really. And it, it still sucks, and it's going to suck for a while. We got over Vernon Wells, guys. We got over Roy Holiday leaving. You could say David Price, even though, even though he was only here for a little bit. You got to get over these things. It, it sucks. It's, the, it's sport. You know, you're going to lose your tough, these great players one way or another to retirement, to obviously free agency to a big trade or, or something like that. So that's enough of the cons, enough of the sad stuff. We got to think of the positives. Well, I kind of gave a positive about Morales kind of being their replacement, you know, kind of has the same numbers in a sense as Edwin usually does. And you're saving almost $30 million on him. Got the same amount of years, just about 30 mil less. So could be in a good situation, but it all depends on how Pierce and Morales do next year that's the big thing right there 
Another pro that we got to take out of this is Edwin did have that draft pick attached to him. Therefore, we get Cleveland's first round pick this year. I know baseball drafts are kind of like, ah, but think about it. How did Cleveland get so good? Draft picks, young guys, development. And who did that? Ross Atkins and Mark Shapiro. They, they drafted the guys. I'm not saying they developed them, but they drafted those guys initially. I'm not saying everybody they have on their team is drafted. Like all, I mean, some of the guys are, and they're amazing. Obviously, they went to the World Series because of that. So I'm trying to have faith in these guys that they can, they can do it. We just want to see results. That's really the way it is. So enough about Edwin, because I'm just going to keep getting emotional and sad about it. That's what almost six minutes, well, it is six minutes of this video so far has been all about Edwin, but I mean, we needed it to happen. So many big moments, the walk-off home run, the fifth deck home runs that he hits. I mean, just walk-off home runs, you know, just everything. Edwin being Edwin, great defensively. Okay, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Okay, let's focus to what the Jays need to do now. We knew, we had a big feeling that Edwin was not going to come back. That is official. He is gone now. Positive. He is not in our division. That is a huge positive you got to take out of that. Now, what do the Jays still need to do? Outfield. I think the corner outfield spots are the must need. Because right now you have Ezekiel Carrera and Melvin Upton Jr. Not bad, but not what you want when you're trying to contend. You don't want to pretend. You want to contend. This team still has a great infield, a great catcher, an amazing starting rotation. Getting those corner outfielders would be very nice. But there's been talk that Jose Bautista rejected a solid, huge offer to come back to the Blue Jays. But the Jays don't want to offer him, or are not going to offer him, at least we think, over his qualifying offer value. Very interesting. I don't know what's going to happen there. I have no idea what is going to happen. Would I be opposed to him coming back? For the right price? No. You know, if he can take the, the qualifying offer for maybe two, maybe three years, which would be pushing it, but two or three years, which, which would still kind of scare me the three-year mark at around what the qualifying offer was, I might be okay with that because it's not a huge cap hit. He's still an offensive good player. He's a dangerous name, dangerous player. People avoid him because he is who he is. And that's that, right? And there, there are other free agents like former Blue Jay, Ben Revere. And I know we loved him, obviously, the trade for Drew Storen. It looked good to start because, you know, uh, he, had, he had a lot of batters bullpen needed help he kind of got that right but storm didn't work out so it looks like a bad trade revere did not get tendered by washington because he didn't have a great year therefore he is a free agent however it doesn't look like the jays are going after him which kind of surprises me because he played left field for us that's a spot we need I mean, maybe they will sign him. I don't know, because all we've been seeing this flipping off season is, oh, the Jays are interested in this guy. They've been inquiring about this name. Oh, the Jay Bruce and Curtis Granderson garbage? Get that out of here. Come on. Like, don't just just get a deal done or something. My goodness, it's, it's just, I'm tired of it. Also, a couple names that are out there. Austin Jackson is an outfielder that is out there. Angel Pagan, he's a left fielder. He's a bit up there, 35 years old, so yeah. Not so bad, uh, not so good there. Obviously, Colby Rasmus is still out there. Mark Trumbo, I mean, ex Oriole slugger, home run, uh, well, the home run champ this year, still a free agent. But I'm not saying go after him because we're trying to get away from the whole home run hitting, you know, just home runs kind of team. So, I mean, and even Michael Saunders is still out there. Uh, at this point, a Ben Revere reunited would be nice in my eyes. I think you guys would enjoy because, one, he's speed. He's a leadoff bat. He's a good contact hitter. Just what the team needs at the top of the lineup. That's what we thought we were going to get in Dexter Fowler. That didn't happen. So Ben Revere, in my eyes, is the next guy you should go after. We're going to see what the Jays can have to say about that. Now, 
I, also, uh, just a, a small thing. Chris Colabella actually signed a minor league deal with the Indians. Every, every former Blue Jay is getting signed by Cleveland right now, and it's focus on me. There, hey, there we go. And it's just like, uh, if Chris Colabello, I swear, if he comes up and hits over 300 with Cleveland, I'll be like, <laughs> ah. let's not say anything about that. So another thing, th uh, last thing before we wrap up the video, the video, bullpen is a, is a desperate need for this team help-wise. Because you lost Benoit, he went to the Phillies. You lost Brett Cecil to the Cardinals. You were we better not go into the season with Aaron Loop as our one lefty, like as on our main lefty. That better not be happening. So they have we have heard they are interested in. Oh, we, they're interested in. Tr Come on, thank you. It's ridiculous. They're interested. Interested. Oh, we've heard that a little bit too much now. Travis Wood, who was a was a Cubby last year, and I would not be opposed to that because his splits as a starter is. Eh. But his splits as a reliever, pretty darn good. That's, I think, where we would use him. Plus, he could start if injuries do happen. You know, and I, I mean, I really would think that he would be a great piece for this team. Not just for this year. I'd say, like, moving forward in a sense, right? So, things like that, right? We also heard about, you know, there's Jerry Blevins is still out there. And there's all kinds of lefties out there. But kind of been quiet, and I really hope. The Jays can sign at least one decent lefty because we need it bad. <sighs> Sucks. Sucks. Lots of moves to, to make going forward. I mean, lots of questions as well, right? But um, <sighs> just can't get out of my mind that Edwin's gone. So what my plan is, guys, is that I know the Blue Jays videos have been kind of scattered around. I know that's the focal point of the channel at this point because that's where I that's where I started out. That's where I got all you guys watching. That's it was Blue Jays stuff. And um, what I'm gonna want to do is every single month, I will do a you know I will do an update video like this one in a sense, unless a big move happens like the Jays sign Bautista or they trade for Bruce or something like that, then I'll make a separate video for it. But otherwise I will make one video per month until spring training. And let me, let me know in the comments guys, before we end off this video, would you guys, I mean, I know they don't show every spring training game, but would you guys be interested in maybe some like, uh, you know, post game, uh, spring training videos? I don't, I don't know if you guys would be up for that. You know, I know I'm missing my baseball, and I know you. Guys, I know you guys are too. Let me know what you guys think about that. Any suggestions about uh, how you want to work the the spring training stuff? Maybe every few weeks we do an update about who's doing well, who's doing not. You know, let, let me know what you guys think. The parrot's gone, guys. But he's going to a team that can pretty much win the championship. I mean, Cleveland. I'll just about won it last year. They're a darn good team this year, so they're it's they're the team to beat in my eyes. So you know what? That is gonna do it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed the video and you miss Edwin already, hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys haven't already, because you know what? Hey, Blue Jays content, fun for you guys to watch, fun for me to make. And uh, comment down below, give me everything, guys. You know, spring training stuff, free agent possibilities. How much are you missing Edwin right now? Let me know. Give me everything, guys. Jose Bautista situation. What do you guys think about all that stuff and lefty reliever possibilities? Again, let me know. And uh, we'll talk to you guys tonight. We got two games on tonight. You're going to get three videos today. Some Blue Jays, some Raptors, and some Leafs. It's going to be a big night. And we'll talk to you guys uh, later tonight. Post game for both games. We'll see you guys then.